Good morning to all of you this morning. And uh, the sun is shining, but uh, the heaters are off outside. So uh, we're feeling the winter here in South Africa for those of you that are still in summer in other parts of the, of the world. But today we're here still speaking about authority. And uh, today our message will be authority in my words. So uh, let's just pray together and then we can start. Father, we come to you this morning and we come in total humbleness and we come in a total position of total dependence on you and your word and your Holy Spirit to speak to us, to take your word, to break your word open to us so that we can experience what you want to say to us today. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to speak to us today, carrying on from where we were last. Let me just uh, sum, give a little short summary of where we were last, last week. Last week we spoke about uh, coming to the position where we are, we have the keys of David which makes us priests and kings. And we explained last time that we need to go into God's presence as a priest. We need to enter into His presence as a priest. And as we enter into the Holy of Holies, and in the Holy of Holies, we receive the revelation from God. And as we receive the revelation from God, we, we go out of His presence. And we said last time, we know that His presence is always with us. But, but moving into His manifest presence, coming out of His presence, we come out as kings with the authority of kings. And now we can come out and we can declare. We spoke about the difference between suggest suggestions, just suggesting something, the difference between proposal, proposing something, or announcing something. And then we said we come to a place where we can declare. And declaring, you can only declare when you have the legal right to declare. And so as we enter in as priests into God's presence, we receive His legal right as we hear His voice. And as we hear His voice and He speaks to us, we come out as kings and we declare what God said. So when we're in our own situations and we're struggling with whatever situation we're struggling with, uh, many Christians come and they and they uh, they come to God and they come to their situation as if we've got no authority. But God has given us authority. But our authority only comes from when we enter into His presence, we stand in His presence, we get the revelation, we hear God's voice, and when we hear God's voice, we can come out and speak forth God's voice with the authority, the legal authority from God to speak forth what He's saying. So I want to take us today to Jeremiah 1, and we're going to read from verse 4 to verse 10. Here's the word of the Lord. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, this is Jeremiah writing, the, Lord of the, Lord, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, O oh Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a youth. For to all whom I send you shall go. Whom I send shall go. To whom I send you, you shall go. Sorry. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. He's speaking about authority in my words. So, so, so listen to what God says. He says, for, for to all to whom I send you, you shall go. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. You shall have the authority to speak my word. Uh, Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. 
See, I have set you this day over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Just so far in the scripture today. There's two words I want us to focus on through this message today. The one word is position, and the other word is words that we speak. Position and words. Let's look at Jeremiah's life. The first thing I want to speak about in his life is, well let me just say this before I get that, we must know how position so that we can speak God's words. We must know our position so that we can speak God's words. Okay, I've got it there. We, if we know our position, we can speak God's words, and our words that we speak comes from our position. The words that we speak comes from our position. If we don't know our position, we cannot speak for it. The words of God. So let's look at, at, at Jeremiah. Let's look at his position. The first thing that God says to him is, before I formed you in the womb, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. And then I gave you a position. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. God has appointed us into positions. The problem is, most of the church does not know their position. We must know where God has placed us. We need to know our position. And most Christians think their positions in the kingdom of God is in the chair that you're sitting in on a Sunday morning. That's not your position. Your position is not the chair that you sit in in the church. Your position is something that God has placed inside of you and He has called you. The amazing part of the scripture, and I know I've, I've preached many, many times on the scripture, but the amazing part of the scripture is God says, before you were formed, I already called you. In other words, before your mother and father even knew each other, God already knew you. Before your mother and father ever came together intimately, God already knew you. Many people think that my life begins or began when I was born. Your life began before the creation of this earth. You got that. Your life began because before the creation of this earth, God already knew you. That's amazing. He already planned before the creation of this earth, God already planned. Before He created time, God already planned that you will be in time and you will be living in 2021 in the time that we are living in in the world that is chaos God already planned that before the creation of anything you understand how important you are God thought about you long before your mother and father thought about each other and then thought about maybe having you or maybe not having you. But before they came together, God already knew you. The second thing I want to say about that is, when you were in your mother's womb, God already placed a calling on your life. Not one of you does not have a calling from God. Not one of us on this earth does not have a calling from God. But it's only those who respond to the calling that enters the calling. But each one of us has got a calling from God inside of us. And God has called you. And the problem is, we don't know what our calling is. 
If I must ask you today, what is your calling? If I must ask you today, what is your purpose on this earth? If I must ask you today, why did God create you and allow you to be living in this time that we are living now? And, and, and I've said this probably every week, we are living in the most exciting times in history. We are living in. And we can either use this time to complain and we can use this time to focus on all the negatives or we can use this time to find out, God, why am I here? What is your calling on my life? And what must I do with the calling? Because God has called you. God doesn't care where you come from. Actually, he decided where you come from. God, God doesn't care about your hurts. Actually, He was there when you were hurt. God is not so focused on, on, on all the issues and all, the, and all your emotional issues that you have today because God is there to take the chaos of your issues and your emotions and turn it around into His calling to use your hurts to bring you to something and to a place where he can raise up and place his word inside of you so that he can send you, so that you can speak for and declare for his plans and his word. That's amazing. I don't know if it's amazing for you, but for me it's amazing to think God thought of me before he created the earth. He actually created the earth for me, so that I could come live on this earth. That was one of the reasons why He created the earth for me and for you. God didn't need the earth. God didn't need anything. God is fulfilled in Himself. <clears throat> but He created it so that we could live and be fulfilled in what His plan is for us in this time. So, what is our reaction when God comes and He says to us, before you were born, or before you, be, be, before you were formed, I knew you, before you were born, I called you, and I've now placed you as a prophet to the nations, He says to, to Jeremiah, to you He might say, I've, I've placed you as one that, whatever God has called you to. But what is our reaction? Our reaction is just like Jeremiah's reaction. Then I said, Our Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a you. I am not good enough. You've got the wrong number here, Lord. You've got the wrong person here, Lord. That's our reaction. You've got the wrong one. When God gives us a position, we usually react in the opposite. That's our reaction. But God's gracious. And God, God's answer, God's response to, to Jeremiah is, But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a you. For to all to whom I send you, you shall go. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them. For I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. You see, what God says is, I've called you to something greater than just breathing on earth. I've called you to be alive. I've called you to live. You see, for many people, living is getting up in the morning and going, I woke up today. I'm still alive. But to us, it should be, I woke up today. Now I can live God's plan for today. Because He's got a plan for us. And, and His reaction to us is, uh, uh, I give you words, and I will put my words inside of you, because I want you to, to move out and do and say what I've called you 
to do and say. You see, the position that God gives you, uh, or the position gives you the words, and the words come from your position. If you don't know what your position is, you cannot speak for God's words. Now, some of you are thinking, but I'm not a preacher. You don't have to be a preacher to speak. Some of you are saying, but I, I, I'm not, that's not part of my personality to, to speak and to be loud and to be like Michael. Uh, that's not part of my personality. It was never part of my personality. But God called us. He called us to speak for. And he, he called us with a word inside of us. And then God comes and he brings his word. And then we read in verse 9. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. That's the most amazing part of being part of the kingdom of God. Remember when Jesus said, You will come before magistrates. Do not worry what you will say. Do not worry. Do not try and prepare yourself. Do not memorize a whole lot of words to say. But when you come before them, I will put my words in your mouth. We'll get to Moses now in a moment as well. And then God comes and he, and he says, I've given you the position, I've called you to be a prophet. Now I've taken you as a prophet and you've reacted and I've reacted, uh, I've answered your, your, your reaction and, and now I say to you, I put my words in you and now I just make sure you understand that I've given you a position. And God says to, to him, my, the position again. See, I have set you this day over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. And this is the word that God's been speaking to us about in this time about authority. He says, I'm giving you nations and kingdoms. I'm setting you over nations and over kingdoms. Because the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God. And, and there is no demonic kingdom that can come up against God's kingdom. And He's giving us word, a word in our hearts. And the word that He puts in our heart is so that we can declare. But we can only declare when we've been in His presence and we've come and God says, before you were born, I knew you. And in your mother's womb, I called you. And in God's presence, I'm standing as I came in as a priest, and I'm standing in His presence, and He says, and I will send you to the nations and to the kingdoms. And He's not just talking about uh, 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 leaving South Africa and going to another country. He's talking about I'm giving you authority. I'm giving you a spiritual authority that's higher than the authority of a king. Alright? I'm giving you authority that is higher than the authority of kings of this world, of presidents of this world. That authority I'm giving you. But I'm in his presence. And I receive the word. And when I leave the word, God says, now you leave with authority because I'm now giving you authority. He says, uh, uh, I have set you this day over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. And each one of us has got a different calling. When God called me to ministry, He gave me the scripture from Isaiah 49. And he said, it is still a small thing for you to bring the tribes of Jacob together. In other words, it's, it's too small. It's only a small part of who you are to be a pastor, to be a shepherd. And God said, I've called you to be a light 
to the nations. I know what my position is. But do you know what your position is? And some people look at me and they say, but you call from God. No, we all call from God. But you've got a special calling. No, we've all got a special calling. Because the calling is only special because God gave us the calling. And if God has called you in your workplace, then He's called you there. And, and before you were born, before you were, were formed, He already knew the plans that He had for you, for your life. And you've got to find out what His plans are. Because if you find out what His plans are, you can walk in His plans. And you can speak for His word. And so my, my challenge to us today is we need to find out what God is saying to us. But you can't find out what God is saying to us if you're so busy that you don't get to Him. And remember I said last week, and I'm just going to keep on repeating things because the more we repeat it, uh, uh, I always say what J.D. Greer, Greer, Greer says, J.D. Greer says, when you are really tired of saying it, your people only start to hear it. So I will keep on repeating and repeating. But we're not so busy. Don't use busy as an excuse. We're not busy. There's just too many distractions. Distractions are keeping us away from entering in to His presence. From hearing what He's saying. From walking out as a king in authority and doing what God has called us to do. Now I know when I preach, uh, like I'm preaching now, <laughs> many people say, yeah, it's good for you. But we just normal people. I never want to be a normal person because God has called me to be a peculiar people. And He's called me to be a royal priesthood. And He's called you to be a royal priesthood. And he's called you to walk in life with not your ambitions, but his dreams for you. And to live out his dream. I've, I've told you this before, but let me say, give you this illustration again. Miles Monroe said well, one day while he was flying in to go minister at a place, and the, and, and, and the airplane came in and was just about to land in, in, uh, on, the, on the airstrip where they were going to minister. And as it came down across, they, they flew over a graveyard. And as they flew over a graveyard, God spoke to him and God said, there is so much potential in that graveyard. Can you imagine potential in a graveyard? And he said, God, impossible. It's just dead bones there. There can't be any potential. And God spoke to him and God said, Do you know how much potential was buried with people that, ne that never used it? That potential never came to a place where it got used. And I don't want uh, to be come before God one day and God said, You never told your people that they've got a calling on their lives. You've just always acted as if you're the only one that is called from God. I want to tell you today, I'm trying to work myself out of a job. If you can take up God's calling, it will make my life so much easier. Why would I want to be so busy doing everything that you should be doing? Because God has got a position for you. But you've got to find out what is your position and once you've got your position, heard your position, you can walk out in authority and declare God's word. And there's power in the words that are then declared. Uh, what is the result of everything in, in Jeremiah's life? When we read in Jeremiah 51 verse 20, God speaks to, to Jeremiah. This is after he's, 
He's worked his life and done and lived out his ministry and he lived out his calling and it wasn't always easy. They hung him in a pit by his, under his arm, threw him into a pit and held him in a pit. He, 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 he was starved. He, was, he went through a difficult, very difficult time doing God's will, but he was fulfilled in doing what God called him to. And at the end, in verse 20 of, of, of Jeremiah 51, God says, You are my hammer and weapon of war. With you I break nations in pieces. With you I destroy kingdoms. Don't you want to say, Lord, I'm your hammer. I'm your hammer. What was the hammer that was used by him? The hammer was the words that he spoke. I wish I had time. I don't have time, but let me, I've got some scriptures here, which is not on the board. Uh, but let me just go through some of the scriptures quickly that, that, uh, that I have here. And uh, uh, some of the scriptures is, is when God, when Jesus gave us, uh, or spoke about the words that we should speak. In Matthew 4 verse 4 he says, remember when Satan came to Jesus and said, Turn these rocks into bread because you're hungry after 40 days of fasting. And Jesus said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. We live by God's word. And here in Jeremiah's life, Jeremiah comes in and God says, I have placed my word inside of you. I have placed my word in you. And now the word that I've placed in you, you can go and declare now the word in, 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 in Matthew 4 is the word rhema, R-H-E-M-A, rhema word. And when you look up rhema in the original Greek, it says it's the uttered word, the spoken word of God. The, the word of God, just like this, is just the Logos word, the Logos word of God. And sometimes we have quiet times and we just read the Logos Word of God. And there's no power in it. But when God speaks to us, He gives us His rhema Word. In other words, He speaks, when God speaks, when God speaks prophetically, it's His rhema Word. When God speaks, when I read the Bible and I open it up and suddenly this Bible just becomes alive to me, it's the rhema word because it's from God himself speaking to me. And so God says, I've given you the rhema, the spoken word of God. In the, in the, in the Strong's it, it means utterance individually, collectively or specifically on a particular matter or topic. In the Thayer's Greek it says uh, the word that has been uttered in either the past or the present by a living entity. So when God speaks His Word, it's a rhema word. And when it's God's Word and I speak His Word, it's a rhema word. And the rhema word has power. Because we just read a little, a little bit later and take up the helmet of salvation. Remember Ephesians 4, uh, where, uh, 6, sorry, where, where, where He speaks about the, the armor of God. And He says, take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, the rhema of God. It's the spoken word of God. And then in Hebrews 4.12, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. The word of God is sharper. The rhema word of God. I took out those scriptures because those scriptures speak about the rhema word of God. And God comes and He says to, 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 to Jeremiah, when Jeremiah says, I'm too young, I cannot speak, I don't know what to say. God says, I have placed, I come and I place my word. I will touch your lips and I will place my rhema word of God inside of you. And when you have heard me, you will be able to go speak and you will become a hammer. And we will crush nations 
and we will crush kingdoms because God's word has become a hammer and he's made us to be the hammer to speak forth his word. What needs to be broken in your life? What are you struggling with in your own life? Are you struggling with sin? Enter into his presence. Hear the rhema word of God. Allow him to fill you with his rhema word. Walk out, declare, and ba 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 ba. Smash that sin in your life. Are you struggling with sickness? And I said last week, not everybody that's sick gets healed for different reasons. Some people, because they've still got some things in their heart, bitterness and unforgiveness and whatever in their heart, and God wants, to, wants you to enter into His presence, receive His Rhema Word, because when you receive His Rhema Word, and He says, you need to forgive, and you come out and you speak forth and you say, I forgive, I'm finished, ba, ba, ba. And I smash the sickness in my life. Other people, God said, my grace is sufficient for you. But for others, we accept our sickness. And every year when it comes to September, October, I'm going to have sinus. I'm going to struggle with, with these things. It's normal for me to struggle this time of the year. I accept it. Or I come and I enter into His presence and I say, Lord, before I was born, you knew me. And before, while I was still in my mother's womb, you called me. I feel inadequate to go out. And God says, come, let me touch your lips. Come, let me fill you. Let me put my word inside of you. And when he puts his word inside of me, I walk out and I stand and I say, Lord, your word says, by your stripes I am healed. And you start, bop. Because his word is a hammer. What kingdoms in your life needs to be chopped? What kingdoms in your life needs to be smashed? What kingdoms, what relationships in your life needs to be smashed? Some of us are in relationships with people that God has not called us to be in relationships with. We need to enter in and say, God, I'm struggling in the situation. What do I need to do? God says, my word is, you cannot be yoked together with an unbeliever. You walk out and you, you go, I speak God's word. I smash what is keeping me and holding me. All the soul ties, all the, the, the things that are holding me, I smash but you don't understand. Bloodline curses, it comes to my family. My parents were divorced. My grandparents were divorced. My great parents, great parents, grandparents were divorced. Now I'm going through a divorce. That's just normal because that's where I am. Then you need to enter into His presence. Get His word. Say, Lord, here I am. Before I was born, you knew me. And before I was born, you called me, and you never called me to a place to mess up. You never called me to be trodden on. So now I walk, and I come back into my marriage relationship, and I take God's word, and I declare it over my marriage. And I say, God's word, the Rhema word says, this marriage is not part of my generations before me. This marriage is now under the blood of Jesus. The only bloodline that covers our marriage is not my parents, not my grandparents, not my great parents, but the only bloodline that covers my life now is the blood of Jesus. And I speak for And when I speak for in the authority that God has given me, but it's only gives me the authority when I understand my position. If I don't understand my position, I don't have the authority to speak. But now I speak forth and I come like a hammer and I crush the kingdoms of the enemy 
that is trying to overcome my, my life. God has called us to be greater than what we are now. God has called us to be more successful than what we are now. God has called us to be more significant than what we are now. There's a difference between success and significance. Success is what I achieve. Significance is what I can help someone else achieve. And God has called me to be more significant. You might be thinking, I think I'm significant. God's called you to be more than what you think. Because He will give you more than you can ever think or imagine or pray or ask for. And that's what He wants to do. But I need to get into His presence so that I can hear His word and I can find my position, find my authority, find where He's called me to. And when I walk out as a king with authority, I can declare and I can speak forth His word and I can say, it is so because God said so. And if God said so, it is so. And I've said many times before, uh, there's, this, there's a bumper sticker that says, God said it, I believe it, that settles it. I want to tell you, that's not totally true. The truth is, God said it, that settles it. Whether I believe or not. If God said it, it settles it. And we need to walk in what God says about us and where we're going. It's not where my watch is. Let me just quickly go to, to the life of, 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 of Moses, if I can get that. Moses. <coughs> In Exodus 3, verse 9 to 10, Moses is his position. God speaks to me and says, I've heard the cry of the people of Israel. Remember, he was at the burning bush. I've heard the cry of the people of Israel. I've seen how the Egyptians are oppressing them. Now go, I'm sending you to Pharaoh so that you can bring my people, in, uh, Israel, out of Egypt. God is saying, Your position is the leader to take the people out of Israel. What is what does Moses say? He replies, he says, I'm inadequate, Lord. I'm inadequate. He replies, he says, now, uh, uh, but Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the people of Israel out of Egypt? He's asking himself, who am I? Lord, you know my past. I killed an Egyptian. Lord, you understand? I fled from Pharaoh. Do you know where I come from, God? I'm not the one. God says, I don't care about your past. I don't care how other people see you. I don't even care how you see yourself. I'm calling you. I'm putting you in a position. Who am I? Who am I? You know what God's answer is? So amazing. God answered him. I will be with you. Who am I? You're not important. I will be with you. That's important. But God, who am I? That's not important. I will be with you. That's important. And then he, on, then he comes again and he says to God, God, I don't have all the answers. He, he says, suppose I go to the people of Israel and say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you and they ask me, what is his name? What should I tell them? I don't know what to say to them. Have you been in a situation or have you, have you felt God calling you and your reaction is, I don't know what to say. I don't have the answers to say, to give them. And God replies, I am who I am. He said me. God actually says, I am Jehovah. Jehovah, I am who I am is the word Jehovah. And he says, I am Jehovah. I am your provider when you need, when you need provision. I am your banner that's over you. I am your righteousness when you need, your right, when you need righteousness. I am uh, the Lord of hosts. I am the Lord your healer. 
I am the Lord your defender. I am the Lord your refuge. I am the Lord your, your savior. I am the Lord your strength. I am the Lord your shield. I am the Lord your peace. I am everything you need me to be. I will be with you. I don't care what your needs is. I am. I will be with you. But Lord, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I don't know what I mean. I am. Tell them. I am sent you. And I want to tell you today, I don't care what God asks of you. If God asks, asks of you something that you already can do, it's not God. God always asks us something that makes us afraid. He always asks us something that, that we just look at ourselves and we say, I'm, I'm inadequate. I don't have the answers. I don't know what to say. God says, I am. Just tell them, I am. I sent you. I am that I am. And then he says, but God, they won't believe me. God says, what is in your hand? What is in your hand? God always provides us. He, always, he doesn't even provide us what we have, He uses. And if it's just your voice, He will use your voice. If it's just your smile, He will use your smile. But God will use you. Because He says, what is there in your hand? And I can, I can spend hours speaking about that. But let me just carry on. And then, then He says, lastly He says, but God, I'm inadequate. I'm inadequate, Lord. I'm inadequate. He says, please, Lord, I'm not a good speaker. I've never been a good speaker, and I'm not now. Even though you've spoken to me, I speak slowly, and I become tongue-tied easily. You've said that. I'm not a good speaker. I can't speak in front of people. I can't speak to people. I God's answer is, The Lord asked me, who gave humans their mouths? Who makes humans unable to you talk or hear? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? It is I, the Lord, and then verse 12. Now go, and I will help you speak, and I will teach you what to say. I can't speak, Lord. Don't worry, I will teach you. But Lord, my, my, my tongue gets tight. Don't worry, I will be with you and I will teach you. But go and speak and say and become a hammer. And once you finish hammering your own life, you're ready to go hammer someone else's. <clears throat> you're ready to help someone else get rid of their issues in their life. By going into His presence, hearing, getting the revelation, coming out of His presence with authority and saying, God says, Bringing that authority to your life. One last scripture, and it's not a last scripture. I don't even know where I am in my notes here. But anyway, one one last scripture. Let me just get you that. Uh, Matthew 16, verse 18 to 19. We know the scripture very well, and we've gone over and over again. But let me read it again in Amplified. And I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades or death will not overpower it. By preventing the resurrection of Christ. I will give you the keys, the authority to, of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind for both declared to be improper and unlawful on earth will have already been bound in heaven. Whatever you lose, permit, declare lawful on earth will have already been loosened in heaven. And at last, some of you have been waiting for this, there's a Michael from Black Translation. And here we come to the Michael from Black Translation. Jesus says, and I believe it's biblical. Jesus says, And I say to you, that you are Peter, the small rock. And on this massive big rock of the revelation of who I am, I will build my church, which is my legal kingdom government. There's your position. Your position is to be part of God's church, His legal kingdom government. And the gates of hell will not overcome. I will give you the keys of authority of the kingdom of heaven. Can you imagine having the keys of authority of the kingdom of heaven? God, Jesus says, I give it to you. And whatever you bind on earth, by declaring my words, will be what is already bound in heaven. 
and whatever you loose on earth by declaring my words will be what is already loose in heaven. And God is saying to us, I want you to start declaring. I want you to start speaking. Do that, start that in your quiet time. Make a quiet time now. Get up and start declaring, my family will serve God. My children will not go astray. Start declaring, enter into His presence, hear His word. Start speaking forth. We will always have enough in this house. We will not go hungry in this house. Start speaking forth God's word. And those of you that are not married, God, I speak your word. You are raising up a godly husband for me. You are raising up a godly wife for me. I speak forth. And you speak forth and you loose on earth by declaring on earth which God already decided for you in heaven. And when we come into that, we come to a position where we can say, I'm walking. I'm standing in my position, but from my position I walk out and I start bringing the words that God has given me. And I start speaking God's words. And as I speak God's word, the authority of God, not my authority, God's authority flows out of me into the, into the place where He's called me to. We're going to go now into a time of worship. And in this time of worship, we're going to focus that He is our authority. But His authority is inside of me. Let's pray together. Father, we just thank You that You have given us a position before we were formed. You already gave us a position. And while we were still in our mother's womb, You called us. And I pray that You will teach each one of us what that position is. And that we will enter into that position, that we will enter into that calling of yours. And as we enter into that calling, we will receive your word. And you will touch our lips and you will fill us with your word, your rhema word, your living word, your, your spoken word. And we will go forth and speak forth what you have spoken and we will declare the glory of the Lord. And as we declare the glory of the Lord, we will be hammers and we will crush nations and kingdoms for your glory. Use us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.